Well, General, uh, this is Timo the Sibas of WBS TV. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, we thank you for returning back. Thank, thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Thank you. Um, well, General David said, you said, tell us how your life has been like in exile. It was not easy life because life in exile, uh, initially, especially when you've been in government and so on, it's like a shock. Although for me it wasn't such a big thing because I have a history of fighting in the bush and I'm a warrior. <coughs> yeah, just before I left, I had spent two weeks in Ulisa. I was staying in a tent. Those of you can tell you, on a tent in the middle of mosquitoes. I was uh, the so-called what I was. Uh, I was in the tent until I resolved that question. So London was not a very big problem, other than security uh, of state agents who were following me. Mm. Yeah, many times, actually, but the British had to put me under protection. Ugandans would be interested in knowing uh, what were the terms and conditions under which uh, you had to return and uh, we have not seen uh, things like uh, you being ruffled at the airport, being charged of certain cases. What were the terms and conditions? When people you return, they think you should return because there are conditions. They do not address the question that in the first instance you are entitled to return. So I was never supposed to be stopped in the first instance. That was an error. That deployment, that sick deployment, which was an embarrassment and a scandal, was never supposed to be. And I'm sure the government learned its, its lesson over time. And the other time, even when they did it, Mr. Mbabas and so on. These are things which are not sustainable, that type of belligerence. So my coming back was bound to happen. To, to, to happen. The only thing is that I had to weigh two options. The first option was, which I was working on, you know, using the mass, the popular pricing of the youth and so on, because I would have come either way, even if I was arrested, and I would come to Enteban, they would tear gas and shoot and arrest, but still I would come. Or, and then they would arrest people and so on, or make sure that I return as an individual, so that I do not subject my people, my supporters and Ugandans to this brutal force of the police. And then I, in that case, then I sacrifice myself than the people. This is what I chose. I said I will go and try my luck. General, have there been any deal cracked between you and President Museveni in regard to your return back to the country? If you are implying that did I make a, a, a deal to, to work with Mr. Museveni and the government, please, I, don't, I didn't. And I can't. Because it, it means nothing. Because if I'm telling you you are drowning, how can I make a deal with you? I can only make a deal with you if you try to do what I am telling you so that we do not capsize. Absolutely. If Mr. Museveni was to say today that we engage in a process where he will carry out these reforms and do the things which, the, which will save the country, I have... Oh, he will have all my support. Because that is what we want. I, it, my aim is not to ban the country. But he must get out of his way to make sure that he moves from the comfort zone and know that there is something wrong in the country. I would like to know from you, do you stand by what you initially reported to Ugandans when you are leaving the country? which it seems to have been the basis upon which um, there was serious witch hunt of you in regard to saying that there were a plan to have you, Mr. Mbabazi, and General Aranda assassinated. I don't think the problem was that. I think the problem was how it was handled. Because you see, there is nothing wrong with writing an internal memo as a head of an organization requiring a director general to investigate some of those things. These are things we always do, but these are confidential things which are, we write about them. There is no one above suspicion in the country by constitution. 
by constitution it is the president who is who cannot commit treason because he cannot commit treason against himself. Any other person can commit treason. Therefore, that brings in another point that there can be all these plans. Therefore, as the coordinator of intelligence then, it was my duty, if anything comes to my knowledge. It would have been wrong for me if I went and addressed the press and said, oh, gentlemen, uh, this I wrote to the director general. These are issues that have come to my knowledge, to my attention, investigated them. Now, the issue was how the letter reached the press and then the government reaction. This is really the problem. It was never, because the other one was not an issue, really. It was only saying that this information has come to my, to my knowledge. Investigate it. And there are many things which, by the way, we, we, we handle in government and in intelligence, more sensitive than even that, which you handle and in, instruct the person responsible to carry out. What's going to be your status a, in the, the army now? This is a, I'm still a member of the army because I have never been retired formally. I think I will ask the establishment to retire me formally because I've done my job, I've served my country well, I have acquitted myself. It would be wonderful for me to, to be retired. And, Are you and ready to retire? I think, yeah, absolutely, 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 absolutely. I'm, I'm ready to retire. You remember when uh, in 1996, I, 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 96, 97, I tried to retire. I had uh, uh, finished my master's in law. I had registered for my PhD. I was actually appointed a UN expert on Sierra Leone. And I went to Sierra Leone to investigate war crimes. I was invited to Washington, you know, uh, uh, to, to give a, a keynote address on environmental law uh, uh, and conventional weapons. I had gone into academia. I, I no longer wanted to, because uh, when I joined the army, I was not a career soldier. I was a political animal who had political views about democracy, about good governance at 24. That's how I went to the bush. Having achieved that, or if I, he, I feel that my, what I fought for, I no longer have the space as a political animal, I should have been left to go and do other things because I had served my country. But unfortunately, I was not allowed. But I hope this time, because I can be of use to this country, really, in a different way than just boxing me into this salute thing. Um, are we seeing you attending the, the NRM uh, delegates conference? No, I can't. I can't attend the NRM delegates conference because I'm not a member. Now, so there is no serving officer of UPDF who is a member of NRMO. Anybody who is a serving member of UPDF, whom you see in Nambole, is breaking the constitution as a partisan officer. You should note that because NR NRMO is not for the soldiers. It is a political organization. Well, That's thanks, uh, General Thank you, David. Thank you, 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 for the Thank you very much. <laughs>